so the SIU is a unit that was formed just about two years ago here in Grand Prairie. At the time it was a pilot project and we essentially investigate all serious and high risk domestic violence, all serious and high risk sexual offenses and all sexual offenses against children of any kind. These types of high risk persons crimes, uh, a lot of times the, the attention that needs to be dedicated to these files there isn't the availability for a general duty member to dedicate that kind of time to one file in particular. So development of this unit allowed us to uh, alleviate that from the general duty and then give the actual investigation the time and dedication it needed as well as to the victim and providing that support and the type of response needed in that instance. So we do have more specialized training as part of our unit. Um, we're all child forensic interviewers. Um, a lot of the uh, victims that we deal with are under the age of 18. Um, and so we can conduct our own interviews, which makes it a little bit easier in our investigations, having that um, continuity for the victims, dealing with the same person throughout instead of you know being interviewed by one, spoken to by another. A lot of times they really like to develop that relationship with the um, lead investigator um, and it helps us build that rapport and um, you know make them feel more comfortable and not have to retell their story over and over again. And um, our unit is also very experienced in obtaining judicial authorizations which are time consuming. Um, for example, search warrants, uh, production orders, so that we can look through social media accounts uh, that normally people don't have access to, but when you have judicial authorization signed by a judge, um, we can look into these things. When we have a dedicated team to do that, we, it's much easier. One person can be working on that judicial authorization, another person can be working on interviewing other people, um, another team member can be working on uh, neighborhood inquiries to see if anyone in the area heard or saw anything. For the RCMP, this all basically started back in 2017 when the Globe and Mail uh, did a, a research article on um, unfounded rates of, among police in general uh, of sexual assaults and found that sexual assaults are highly reported as unfounded. And so there was an investigative piece into that and it was titled, like, Would Police Believe You? And that really kick-started a number of programs for police again across the country to really take a look at their investigations and see why is this why is there such a high unfounded rate and so there's been a lot more training a lot more awareness around what sexual violence is um, and then recognizing that sexual violence is not reported falsely any more than any other crime and so when we look at and, and those reports are again like Stats Canada and Justice Canada will report that anywhere from about two to eight percent of files that are reported to police um, are unfounded or actually false and that's no different for sexual assaults than it is for vehicle thefts or break and enters or any other crime so if what we're receiving is only like a small percent is actually unfounded then we had to question and ask well why are we having such high unfounded rates and so when we looked at that and we started to dig deeper into what are some of the key things that we are missing, it was that oversight, is that knowledge on what sexual violence actually is and how to appropriately gauge with people of sexual violence. So a big part of what we've been doing is bringing that officer awareness and that training to our, our front lines and to our investigators and our supervisors so that they, when they get a file, they can recognize what it is. Um, and then also bringing that public education as well that what is sexual violence. Uh, when you get a domestic violence file, you know, typically a brand new file, if it's a, a fairly violent situation and the woman's trying to get out of it or the man's trying to get out of it, um, we do a lot of initial support. Um, while they're still doing their investigation, we're taking them to the courthouse to get a protection order to, for their safety. Uh, the SIU has a, a stay safe program that we access and help facilitate for them. So if we think that uh, the person needs some security cameras set up in their home because the, uh, the accused might come back and harass them, we can request that they uh, approve that through APAC security and have those put in place. Um, it can be quite heavy for domestic violence files at the beginning and then uh, throughout the whole court proceedings a lot of things can change. They have children together or houses together um, so we kind of navigate the court system with them and SIU helps us throughout the whole process when there's any concerns, any breaches of the uh, protection order. Um, you would typically see a file with us for about two years until the criminal court side of it's done and we connect with SIU throughout that whole process. 
Well, it's just such a personal topic. Family violence is such a personal topic. Sexual assault is a very personal topic. So it's not just that somebody came and stole your car. Um, it's, it's a more rewarding investigation in the sense that somebody has trusted you enough to reveal one of the most intimate parts of their life. Um, and they're really putting all their faith in you to help them through this. You see, these people are trained in how to speak to children. They are trained in terms of looking at the dynamics of an abusive relationship and what to look for in terms of gathering evidence to take into court. Um, and that is so important. Many people would would cringe at having to speak to a child about being physically or sexually abused. And we, we can't have that. We need comfort level to help the child understand that it is not their fault and that the offender is accountable and needs to be held accountable. Uh, I know we have had a lot of uh, victims respond to us and thank us for the work we've done with them and how it's helped them and impacted them and allowed them to move forward with their lives with resources and the ability to get some sort of closure on the events that have impacted their lives. I know with our Crown prosecutors, they we're always in constant contact with them in regards to ongoing court processes for our files, and they've made mention about how well the unit has helped them with their side of prosecuting these kind of files and the fact that they've stated we don't leave any stone left unturned so when they do take these files to court a lot of times they're having defense plea out wanting to do plea deals with them uh, which a lot of times uh, victims of these type of crimes they want to see the court process go through but at the same time that fear of being around that offender and having to relive those events and the trauma uh, they are thankful that a lot of the a lot of the files sometimes do go to these plea deals because then they're not further traumatized having to go in front of a judge and in some instances here a jury to then try to explain and then a lot of times they feel forced to try and make people believe what has happened to them.